Know who you are in Christ. Know who you really are in Christ. Not what the world says who you are, not who the world wants you to be, but who God declared you to be, folks. Because God gave you a destiny. You have a destiny already laid out. You don't make your own destiny like the world says. The God already made your destiny for you, and you got to walk into it. You have to walk in, in God's plan for your life. But many people, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. You're walking in Satan's plan for your life. All the talents God has given you, you're not using it to glorify God. You're using it in vain. God gave you these talents for you to use it to glorify Him, but you're not using your talents to glorify God. So stop wasting your talents on the world. The, the world doesn't really care. The world might give you some type of validation, but that's about it. It has no eternal purpose. People, people come, people go. People are famous. Some people are not famous. It's like, stop living for temporary things. Live for eternal things. God has eternal rewards. The day of resurrection, some people will be resurrected to life, and some people will go to everlasting destruction. So Jesus is going to raise the dead. Everyone's going to stand before God. The graves will be open. God's going to judge everyone. Some people are going to have eternal glory, and some people are going to have eternal damnation. You know? Some people are going to have eternal damnation away from God because all their life they did not live for God. All their life they despised God's commandments. They thought life was all about vacations and partying and their career and stuff like that they, and they, they, they didn't care about God they didn't do the will of God they didn't know God so you need to know the Lord you need to know the Lord Jesus you have to be born again you need to be washing the blood of Jesus Christ for your sins you got to come and humble yourself at the cross you have to take your problems to the cross Stop taking your problems to the bars. Stop taking your problems to your girlfriend or boyfriend and take your problems to the cross of Jesus. Because no one's going to help you with your problems, folks. That alcohol is not going to help you with your problems. You might be numb to your problems, but it's not going to fix it forever. Jesus Christ has come to heal you. Jesus Christ is your healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. Jesus Christ is Savior for a reason. He's here to save you from yourself. Because some people, your, your worst enemy is yourself. So a lot of people, Jesus come to save you from yourself, from all types of bad friends. He's come to save you from the wrath to come. He is the, he is the ultimate savior. Jesus Christ is the ultimate superhero. So understand the gift of salvation that's, that's before you as, you as you walk this earth. There's a purpose to life. You have to find it in Christ. See, there's a purpose for your life and it's only in Christ. Without Christ, people, it's meaningless. Without Jesus in your life, folks, it, it's meaningless. Because you're going to perish one day. You're going to stand before God one day. Judgment day is coming. Judgment day is going to be a big day for a lot of... It's going to be a big day, people. There's going to be a lot of people in the judgment day line are not going to make it. The judgment day line, a lot of people are not going to make it. It's not a popularity contest. You're not going to be out here arguing with God and cussing out God and stuff like that. You can do that, you can do that out here with preachers and stuff. But when you stand before God, you're not going to be out here acting a fool. So understand this, God is giving you time right now to understand your folly and to repent from it and turn away. God's giving you enough time to repent and come to Him and be saved. Amen, we're not saved. Uh, we're not saved by words. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works that anyone could boast. We're saved, folks, by grace. It is God's grace that we have this opportunity to go to heaven. You know, we don't deserve it. We didn't earn it, so that's why we can't boast about it, because it's just God and His goodness. That's why you must know the character of God. God is just good. God can use anyone He wants to. You don't have, you don't have to be, you know, you don't, have to come from a, you don't have to come from a good background for God to use you. God will use you based off who God is, because God is good. So, yes, a lot of people, you're unworthy. We're unworthy to follow Christ, but it's about how good God is. God uses the, 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 un, God uses the lowly. To confound those who think they are wise, God used the weak things in a lot. God used the weak things in His world to confound those that are mighty. So please, people, please understand that God can use you. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter where your background is. God can use you. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter if you feel like, well, I'm not a good speaker or I'm just really shy. It doesn't matter. God can still use you. Moses, God used Moses, but Moses had a bad speech problem. Moses was like, God, I have a bad speech problem. I have a, like, this. And God, and God um, helped them out. So God can use you, people. He can use you. So you don't, you don't have to be famous to be used by God. You don't need to be, you know, some type of, like, the best speaker. 
because it's God working through you, folks. When you're born again, God works through you. You're not doing this by yourself. When you're walking with Jesus Christ, you're not out here by yourself. You have God, you have angels, you have all of heaven with you. The Bible says, if God is with you, who can stand against you? If God is with you, who can stand against you? Even if the whole nation of America goes against you, if you're a child of God, um, God is still bigger than the nation. So you have nothing to fear as a child of God. Don't fear a man. The fear of man is a snare. A lot of people, you fear mankind, and that's your biggest trap. You care what mankind says, but you don't fear God. That's going to be your downfall. You need to switch that mindset and stop fearing man and fear God. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man, to fear God and, and keep his commandments. God will bring everything into judgment, every secret thing, whether good or evil. So you can't hide anything from God. You can hide it from yourself. You can, well, you can hide it from your spouse, hide it from your kids. But you're not going to hide it from God. God's going to expose you. God's going to expose you on a day of judgment. And you're going to be full of shame if you don't get right with God now. You're going to be full of shame when God exposes what's inside your heart of all the defilements, all the perversion, all the ungodly thoughts, all the hatred, all the racism. God's going to reveal this to you and be like, you, did you know you did this here on earth? But God shows you the replay of your life, all the people you made fun of, all the people you despise, all the people you look down upon. All these people you, you did evil to, God's going to reveal back to you and judge you for it. And even though you could be crying and weeping and stuff like that, God's not, God's not going to care about your tears because it's judgment time. It's time for judgment. When it's time for judgment, you know, there, there's no more forgiveness. The time for forgiveness is now. Repentance is a gift, folks. Repentance is a gift. Know that repentance is a gift. To ask for forgiveness for God, that is a gift. Because that's is, this gift is not going to last forever. Um, when you die, you cannot ask for forgiveness. A lot of people, you feel like, well, when I'm about to die, I'm just going to ask for forgiveness on my deathbed. You might not get that, people. You might not get that. If your heart doesn't love God, why would God give you a deathbed repentance? You, you don't want to be with God. There's a story of John Bunyan, of this guy who went to hell. He thought he could repent and go to heaven, and he went straight to hell because his heart loved sin. His heart was for sin. It's very foolish for you to think that all your life your heart loves evil, and you think you're going to die and say, God, forgive me for I die and go to heaven. I mean, that, that's just madness, folks. That's, that's not how God's going to work, people. You cannot fool God like that, people. You can fool yourself, but you're not going to fool God. Your heart loves evil. You're going to go where evil goes. You, you, know, you can't just go into bed and just say, God, forgive me for everything I've done. Let me go to heaven. That's not how it's going to work. That's not, that's not how it's going to work. You have to get right with God now. You have to get your heart changed now. Not later, but now. Because you're not going to fool God on your deathbed and think you're going to just say, oh, God, forgive me before I die. Let me go to heaven. That's not going to work. It might not work, people. Don't don't play around with your soul like that. This is too big. Of, this is too big. This is of infinite imper, uh, importance. So don't play around with your soul like that. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and a violent take about force. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and a violent take about force. This is a fight down here. The saints of God, we're fighting. We have spiritual warfare. All these sex demons out here, we we're rebuking them. We're living in holiness. We're fasting. As a saint of God, people, this is a spiritual warfare. We're not, we're not out here just chilling and just looking cute. As a saint of God, you are in the battlefield. You're, you're trying to save souls. You got, out, you got witches out here trying to curse you. You have all types of Satanists out here trying to come against you. As a child of God, folks, you are in the, you are in the warfare. But as an ungodly person, you're not doing anything. You think life's all about partying and stuff like that. You're deceived. You're, you're, you're deceived. You're on the wrong side. So as a child of God, this is a warfare. Everything down here, all the evil stuff, we gotta we gotta deal with, but we but we but we go to God. We go to God and God helps us, God covers us, God gives us wisdom, God gives us strength to continue the fight. But we will overcome. Hallelujah. Paul says, through much tribulation, through much tribulation, we enter to the kingdom of God. So a, a lot of saints, a lot of saints, you know, they go to heaven, but they but they go in ways, you know, the world might not think that's good. A lot of people, like I think you you you're going to a couple of Christian children were chopped up. A couple of Christian children, you're gonna were chopped up by like Muslims and stuff like that. Hey, those children are in heaven, but this is what I'm saying, folks. Like, as a child of God, as a Christian, you have to count the cost. The world's not gonna the world's gonna hate you as a child of God. Even in America, America is not the worst persecution yet. But even in America, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of people hate you if you love God, if you love the commandments of God. 
it, overseas follows Krishna getting their heads chopped off, Krishna being burnt alive, because the world, the world hates Jesus. The world is the world is in darkness, and Jesus is the light. But people don't like the light. People do not like the light of God. People want to stay in darkness. People love their sin. People love their lifestyle. And when you start exposing people to the lifestyle, they want to be like, shut up, bro. Don't tell me what to do. Or shut up, bro. Go home. And Or shut up, bro. Keep that to yourself, man. Because people love their darkness. People don't want to be told they're doing evil. They're doing wrong. People love the lifestyle of sin. And that's the sad truth. To the point where people will even kill you for it. People will kill you for it. But it's worth dying for, folks. Jesus is worth dying for. That's why many people die for Jesus, because he's worth dying for. Jesus Christ says, you have, you have to be able to lose your life for him, people. You have to be able to lose your life for God. If you cannot do that, people, you will lose your life. If you cannot give your life to God, you will lose your life. I mean, like, your eternal life. You will lose it. You'll be rejected by God. So be willing to sacrifice your life for Christ in any type of way or form, either by death or either by just, you know, Submitting to God, denying the world, rejecting what the world, rejecting culture. You have to reject culture to follow Christ. You cannot follow culture and follow Jesus. They're, they're completely different. It's, com it's completely different. The culture loves one thing, and God could hate it. And you, you can't be in the middle. You can't be in the middle. The culture says you can be in the middle, but God does not say that. So if you're going to follow culture, culture is going to get you in trouble. Culture is going to lead you to um, the pits of hell. So follow what Christ says. Jesus Christ said, follow me. He didn't say follow culture. You know, he didn't say follow trends. He said to follow me. Follow Jesus. Jesus. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Jesus Christ is, a, is the same God. He is not changing. He is not going to change. So you can trust in him. You can trust in him. But the trust in culture, though, the trust in society, I mean, society is unreliable. So society is always going to change. People love their pleasure. People love their sin. So people are going to change laws to, to fit their sin. That's just kind of how it is. But as a Christian, it doesn't matter because as a Christian, our laws are above the laws of man. As a Christian, your laws are above the laws of your nation. So as a Christian, you should always go with the laws of God, not the laws of mankind. But many people, you feel like the laws of mankind are more important than the laws of God, and that's where you're, and that's where you're going to be destroyed. The words of man, people, are futile. The words of mankind are going to pass away. But, but the word of God will endure forever. The word of God will endure forever. So you need to honor the word of God. You need to fear the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word of God, folks, the, the word of God is going to endure forever. You want a gospel check? No, can you say what? So the word of God, people... Everything was made by the Word of God, and Jesus Christ is the Word of God manifested in the flesh. So you're going to be judged by the living Word. When, you, when God judges you, He's going to be judged by what's inside this book. When God says, do not steal, do not murder, do not commit adultery and fornication, God's going to judge you by, by His commandments, folks. God's going to judge you by His Word. So understand this. You need to know the laws of God. Because the laws of America might say, hey, man, go do what you want. Go get sex changes, go be a freak, go be weird and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what America says, but God says something completely different. So are you going to live for America or are you going to live for God? Because don't, don't, don't let America put you in a bad position on the day of judgment. Uh, all kind, A lot of nations will be brought down to hell, people. If you want to live for America, America is not going to be your friend on a, on a day of judgment. A lot of people in America are deceived. A lot of people in America have sold their soul. So it will be very foolish for you. To, to really care about what this country says and make laws and not the laws of God. The, law, the laws of God are not going to change. The laws of God are way above your, your human laws here in America. So as a child of God, we don't live for the laws of man. We live for the laws of God. We do obey the, the, the laws of the land, of course, to a, certain, to a certain extent. We only bow down to God, though. As a child of God, we only bow down to God. We don't bow down to men. We don't, we don't bow down to the government. But people who don't believe in God, you're going to bow down to the government. You're going to, you're going to bow down to, to the, what the government says. Because that's your God. You're, you're going to bow down to science. You're going to bow down to money. You're going to do it just automatically because you don't have no faith in God. You have no true um, morals. So this is why you got to pick a side. You have to choose this day who you will serve. If you choose to serve Christ, or you're going to choose to serve Satan. But there is no middle ground. There is no, I don't believe in God. That's not an option. Option is choose Christ or choose Satan. 
But Satan, his time is running out, people. He's getting more bold nowadays. Satan's getting more bold. All this evil stuff in the Grammys. No, get, Satan's getting more bold. And if you don't see it, people, you might be brainwashed. You might be satanically brainwashed. All that music you listen to, all, the, all those weird singers you, you, you watch, you might be brainwashed. If you don't understand, Satan is getting more bold in these last days. And if you don't see this, people, I really feel bad for you. I really feel bad for you. Because it's, it's really obvious at this point. It's really obvious how evil this country is. It's really obvious um, who these celebrities really worship. And many people, you say you say things like it's art. This stuff is not art, folks. It's not art. So pick a side. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back. And he will judge the quick and the dead. Jesus Christ will bring everything into judgment. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Believe in him. Come to me, all your heavy learning. Um, heavy laden and burning, I'll give you rest for your soul. Jesus Christ will give you rest for your soul, folks. He'll give you rest for your soul. He's the only one that can save you. Jesus Christ will be your savior, or he will be he will be he will be the judge on the day of judgment. He will judge you righteously. He will execute judgment on all those who despise the ways of the Lord. And with. All right, I'm going to end in Jude. I will therefore put you in remembrance, there, though you once knew this how, to, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, and the angels were, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had preserved and everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth, for example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So people, Sodom and Gomorrah was an was a example of how not to be. If you don't know about Sodom and Gomorrah, you need to look it up. Sodom and Gomorrah was a disgusting city, uh, full of rape, full of perversion, full of homosexuality, and God destroyed it in fire and brimstone. And that was an example for mankind to not go that way. But this is a, this is a nation that's going the same way as Sodom and Gomorrah. So God is gonna, once again, destroy the world and fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers that follow the flesh, to stop, despise the minion, and speak evil of entities. Yeah, Michael, the archangel, archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. There is not bring against him a really accusation, but said, "The Lord rebuke thee." But these speak evil of those things which they knew not, but was, but they knew naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. And ran greedily at the error of Balaam for reward and perish in the gang saying of Kor. Let's skip down to verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these sayings. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. So Jesus Christ is coming back with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking at their own lust, and their mouths speak of great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So people, all these people out here who are speaking hard against Jesus, they're saying, F Jesus, bro, F Jesus, he's going to come back for the execute judgment upon all these ungodly people. Jesus Christ is coming back to make war.